Hi guys, welcome to my latest video, and as you can probably tell by the background, it's going to be about moving with cats. People have been asking me to make this video for years, and, uh, well, I'm moving right now, so I thought what a great chance to do this. Hey Mr. P, how you doing? So, <laughs> moving with cats, it's definitely a big worry, you know, moving is often an anxiety inducing time in our lives, and it's even more so when we're worried about the stress uh, it causes our little critters as well as just the general uh, arrangements that need to be made for it around them. Before we get going, please remember to squish that subscribe button and pet the bell notification icon so that you can watch me pet this little guy a little more often. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, we have a guest, guest star in the background there. Uh, but don't let me get distracted. <laughs> so, moving with cats, uh, very, very stressful. Now, moving in general is very, very stressful. I hate doing it. I've had to move far too much in my life. But um, it's a necessity, it's a process we all go through. And when we're moving with felines, um, I feel like it's stressful for them, but it's also even more stressful for us because we worry about them. So it's kind of this positive feedback loop. To understand the effect of moving on cats, we have to understand the biology of cats. And I'm gonna to get to a few tips a little bit later in the video, but I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about why relocating your home might be a little bit stressful for your felines. And now we all know that cats are territorial and we all know that they're a uh, middle of the food chain predator, meaning that they have all these terrifying claws and fangs with which to hunt small helpless creatures, but they're also uh, small and delicious. So they have to watch out for predators hunting them. So for a cat being aware of its territory and to know it intimately is really important. They have to know where the dangers lie, they have to know where the good hiding spots are, they have to know where the trees they can climb are. So, and they have to be aware of any changes in the environment that might herald danger. So cats get to know their environment very intimately and then are very, very aware of any changes in it. And certainly you've seen a cat strutting around its territory and they'll be very, very confident. They'll be walking tall, looking around, looking really comfortable. And I'm sure you've also seen cats who are walking through unfamiliar territory and they're slinking down low to the ground. Their ears are really, really perky. They're looking around, they freeze all the time to stop and observe. So very, very, very aware of their territory. Um, and when you're moving, you know, the stress comes early on. Even as I started packing, my guys started acting really weird. Uh, you know, Pirate wouldn't sleep all night. He'd walk around and yowl and just hop in at bed, out of bed, in bed, out of bed. It was impossible to get him to settle. Uh, Claudia, well, Claudia's actually a very brave old cat. She's been tolerating it pretty well. But then occasionally she'll get super spooked and her tail will puff up and she'll go sit between, in the, find like a crevice between two boxes to hide in. And this is all normal because, uh, you know, this apartment that they have lived in for the last couple of years uh, is their territory. And as soon as we start changing furniture around, putting things in boxes, that territory changes. Uh, so this puts the cats on high alert. Just look at this vicious predator. Massive paws and fangs. Let's look at the fangs. And of course, moving is stressful for us too. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of hassle, expense. And I think there might be a little bit of a feedback loop happening there as well, where the cats get stressed out because we're a little bit stressed. So that's why cats get a little bit anxious around a move. And our goal during a move should be both to comfort the cats and help them relax during the preceding period, and then also to help them adjust to their new environment when you get to the new home wherever you're going. There are many reasons why you want to mitigate a cat's stress around the move. I mean, of course, we want our little friends to just be happy and relaxed all the time, so we just don't want them to worry, right? But we also know that some cats can develop toileting issues when they're really stressed out. And for an update on that, please check out the video I made called Why Does My Cat Pee Inappropriately? Uh, it's very, very informative, and it talks about feline interstitial cystitis, which is a stress-triggered health condition. Uh, other cats might develop spraying, particularly if you have an unfixed male or a male who's been neutered later in life, they may be tempted to spray uh, either during the move process or when they get to their new territory. So again, you want to mitigate stress around that. And of course, if your cat has other health conditions, you know, it can, a little extra stress never helps you when you're sick. So here are my tips for helping cats deal with a move. The number one tip I can give you guys is to try to maintain your cat's routine as much as possible. So this means even in this chaos of boxes and moving around, Try to leave their favorite places to sleep intact until the very uh, later stages of the, of the moves. Try, especially if they have places they like to hide, like maybe a little cat bed in the closet 
or something out of the way like that. Maybe try to like leave it in place until the very last day of the move. Uh, please try to feed them at the same time each day and don't change their food or their litter. So try to keep as much constant in their life as possible because again, the term we use as vets is neophobic. Cats are neophobic, they don't like anything new and you already have new things being thrown at them in terms of their environment and in terms of your movement and patterns and what you're doing. You might have strange people come to the house to help you pack who aren't usually there. So, you know, those things cannot be controlled. So we try to control what we can. The second thing we can do to help cats deal with the stress of relocation is, and you guys can probably guess, almost guess what this is gonna be because this comes up in so many of my videos that have to do with feline behavior. And that's gonna be feel away. Uh, here's a little box for a feel away refill. Wow. And I talk about this stuff in many, many of my videos because it's a really useful behavioral tool for managing stress in cats. Uh, as probably everybody who's been following me knows, feel away is a uh, synthetic version of a cat's cheek pheromones that comes in a little diffuser and you plug it into your wall and humans can't sense anything that when you do that, but cats um, can scent this pheromone and it just makes everything smell like home. So if you plug this into your house when you're moving, uh, it'll just help them relax a little bit and then it'll help the cat deal with stress. And just so you guys know, I'm not sponsored by Feel Away. I mean, I'm not getting any money to promote them. This is just something I honestly feel as a professional and I use this in my clinical practice all the time to manage stress-related conditions in cats. So just having it plugged in in your house when you're packing will help your cat chill out a little bit and deal with the stresses of moving a little bit better. Now, uh, of course, if you plug it in next to an air purifier and open window, it won't work so well. So try to plug it away from open windows and preferably in the room where your cat spends most of their time. And then on move day, what you wanna do is package the cats up take them to the new house and have feel away either waiting there already or plug it in and put them into a small room like the bathroom or a walk-in closet or a spare bedroom. Make sure feel away is plugged in there. Have food and water and litter all sitting there ready for them and leave them in that room to just relax in their own private space that smells nice, smells nice and homey while you finish your move while you bring in your furniture, people stomping around, and they can stay in there till the end of the day when everything's already settled in your new home, and then you can open the door and let them explore, but do leave that setup in the room that you've designated for them so that that can be their safe space, it's a place they can retreat to, and it'll probably be somewhere they'll be tempted to stay for at least the first day or two. And there's another video in the works just what to expect when a cat's exploring your home, but in general terms, what you can expect is that they'll be very tenuous. There'll be a lot of slinking around, a lot of sniffing, a lot of checking out dark corners. <laughs> Claudia here is checking out the boxes while I talk. Uh, so there'll be a lot of investigative behavior, but they'll want to have, be, have a safe space to retreat to. And that room with the feel way plugged in, their food, their water, a litter box, can be that little safe space for them. And then after probably a day or two, they'll just get used to the new living space. and you know, then you can just set it up however you want to set it up for your cats. Now here, I just want to take a quick moment to talk about outdoor cats. So my guys live indoors, so not really a concern for me. But if you have cats that are used to going outdoors, there's a real issue there with when you relocate, uh, these cats have an outdoor territory that they're very uh, fond of. And there's a real concern there about that cat re relocating itself back to where it came from. And there are stories of cats walking hundreds of kilometers to get back to their home after they've moved or the family's moved. So, and those stories are real, that really happens. You know, The Incredible Journey, which is a wonderful book and a pretty okay Disney movie, uh, is kind of based on that. Awesome children's book. I highly recommend you read it to your kids. So, but that's real. Like cats will travel long distances to get back to where they came from. To stop your cat from absconding when you relocate, what I suggest is keeping them indoors for at least the first month after you move and then start to let them out the side gradually in small kind of bursts, opening of the door. They may be a little bit hesitant to walk out it. They might be really looking forward to running out, but it doesn't really matter if you just let them out in small bursts, usually right before the feeding time, have the food ready, call them back for food, uh, let, give them a chance to explore their new territory gradually with a strong motivating reason to come back in a short order, i.e. dinner's ready. And then hopefully over the course of a few weeks, they'll explore the territory on your new house, get familiar with it, and it'll be their new home territory. And then you don't have to worry about them wandering off to your old house. So 
couple weeks of confinement in the home and then gradually increasing short periods of outdoor exposure, graduating up to uh, the outdoor lifestyle that your cat is used to. So that's for outdoor cats. Indoor cats are e a lot easier, of course. The next tip I'm gonna give you for making moving with cats a little bit easier is going to be to not forget about your cat. Take some time to bond with them. Make sure you're giving them attention that you normally would, or maybe even a bit more. Because, you know, as we're worrying about the move, as we're worrying about packing, relocating, finding a new place, our cats may not be the first thing on our minds, right? We may neglect them a little bit, but I think that reconnecting with your cat and just having spending a little bit of time, even if it's just a very, very small amount of time each day, petting them, playing with their favorite toy, uh, just generally spending some good quality time with your felines will help them relax and help them feel more assured. It'll also help you because let's face it, Petting a cat is quite relaxing and pleasant and in the middle of a busy move, it's important to give yourself that time and space to just relax and enjoy life a little bit and then it'll make it easier for you to deal with the stresses and the work and effort of moving. So Claudia has been bringing me her little fish toy that she absolutely loves to play fetch with every evening since I started packing, which is super adorable, but it also tells me that she's kind of feels like something's going on and she just wants to sort of burn off some steam, play with me, connect with me. So it's kind of a two-way street and it's really, really adorable. But it's really good to be aware of these signals that your cats are giving you that they want attention. And you know, I'd much rather a cat signal for attention by bringing me their toy than by peeing on the floor. And I firmly believe that a lot of the anxiety that our pets feel around the move comes from just reading our body language and our anxiety around the move. So. You know, keeping yourself calm and managing your own stress is probably not going to hurt your pet's stress levels either. Now, I know this video is mostly focused on cats. Um, for dogs, things tend to be a little bit easier because dogs are a little bit more easygoing. For them, the home is where the pack is and your dog will probably be happy anywhere you are. So a little less effort with dogs, but uh, you know, if you guys are interested, I can make a more dog specific video on relocating, but it's probably going to be a little bit less intricate than this one. My next tip for moving with cats is going to be what to do if all of the above isn't enough? What to do if, like Mr. Pirate, for example, your cat won't shut up all night and just walks around yowling and dragging towels around the hallway? Where is he? Okay. I'm glaring at him off camera. So, uh, or if your cat is prone to things like feline idiopathic cystitis or has a history of stress-induced health issues, uh, then you might want to call a friend. So by that, I mean call your local veterinarian because we do have tools in our toolbox to help mitigate cat stress. The one that I'm currently using with Mr. Pirate is called gabapentin. It's a medication that has gained great traction in the veterinary world these days for pain control. Uh, it's super safe. It's like a tiny little capsule that you give your cat twice a day. And I use it for all my post-operative pain control these days. Uh, but it also has an anxiolytic effect. It's also used at higher dosages for cats who are really anxious and don't like coming to the vet. You give it to them at home before the vet visit. It chills them right out and makes a much easier vet visit, a more pleasant vet visit, both for the doctor and the cat. So it's a wonderful little drug called gabapentin. And I've been giving it to Pirate for, um, to deal with arthritis a little bit over the last year. It's a great pain control tool for a variety of indications, but I've also been giving it to him for anxiety during the move. And just by giving him this pill, it just makes him quite sleepy for the first few weeks that you're giving it, which is a fantastic side effect of the pain control medication because it makes him way more relaxed and helps him deal with the anxiety of having to make a move. And in fact, uh, gabapentin is an integral part of my practice. Uh, gabapentin is a great tool that we have in our toolbox, super safe, super cheap, easy to administer. And just a pro tip, this is Mr. Pirate's gabapentin bottle comes in tiny little capsules, tiny little capsules like that. So um, not all medications come in sizes that are convenient for cats. So when I have medications that are maybe come in tablets that are you know human size and it'd be a bit awkward to give to a cat or that tastes really bad, uh, what I'll do is I'll ask my local compounding pharmacy to make capsules with the exactly right dosage for any individual patient that I have. And it's really fantastic because that allows me to give really precise medication dosages 
it saves my clients the hassle of having to cut up pills. And also these little capsules are tiny and as soon as you smear them with a bit of wet food or even water, they become really slippery so they go down the gullet really easily. It's really easy to give them. And uh, I suggest you guys look at my video on how to give a cat a pill for tips on how to do that. But uh, having medications compounded into these tiny little patient-specific doses, and I use this for cats, I use this for small dogs, I use this for like ferrets, um, where there's just no good off-the-shelf medical solution, uh, is really, really handy. And really, probably any veterinarian in the Western world should be able to do this for you. Uh, so then I have like a pirate-specific gabapentin dose that I give to him, and then he gets super chill and deals with stress a little bit better. So pharmacotherapy. And of course, there's many other medications that are used for managing anxiety in a veterinarian's toolbox, but gabapentin is great because it works really fast. Some of the more traditional ones uh, can take weeks to actually work uh, or might have uh, other side effects or, or might be more expensive. There's, you know, there's, there's a reason why I picked gabapentin. So that's my, definitely my number one choice for managing short-term anxiety in cats around moving. Look how calm this cat is. And of course, a part of maintaining routine is making sure that the cat's litter box is nice and clean. Mr. Pirate just made a deposit in his to remind me of this. So I'm gonna have to go clean it after I'm done recording this video. But please make sure that you know their water is topped up, their litter box is clean. All of this is an important part of maintaining your cat's routine. And all of this will stress your cat out if it's not done properly. So let's finish this video with Mr. Pirate in my arms just the way we started. As you can see, he's nice and relaxed and dealing with life probably a little bit better than I am during this move. So um, I hope you found this video helpful. Please try to implement these things next to you move with your cats. And uh, I'm gonna get back to packing, but uh, you guys feel free to check out some more of those videos I mentioned. And I hope you all have a lovely day.